Hey guys, welcome to Music360, your one-stop destination for all things music. Okay, who am I kidding? It's just Gadgets360, but tell me one thing. Was the song that I just played eligible for copyright infringement on YouTube? If yes, why? If not, why not? Well, at the end of this video, you'll have all the answers to both the questions. Hey guys, my name is Shubham and you are watching Elemental where we talk about the smaller things in tech that make a much bigger impact on the real world. You can catch us every Sunday at 1 p.m. And if you love this series, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that bell icon so that you are always notified of our latest videos. Okay, I think I should take out the guitar now. Play the intro bumper. So the way I started off with the video, yeah, that's the gripe of every single musician YouTuber because we make song covers, right? And they are harmless. We are not like gonna make an entire album of song covers just for our profit. We are just making it so that we can, you know, showcase our work on YouTube. But then at the end of it, we end up getting copyright strikes. Like best case scenario is just you getting a notice that you need to, you know, take down the video or uh, turn off the part in which a particular copyrighted sequence is going on in the sense like mute it off or just you know demonetize your video if you have monetized your channel and the worst case scenario being you get a call from a lawyer saying that yeah we are going to sue you yeah things can get out of hand pretty quickly when it comes to just putting out music videos on youtube while on the surface, it seems unfair, but in reality, things get deeper. Let's start by understanding what copyright actually means. So you know how you call certain things your property, right? Can be things like your house, your room, your Hot Wheels car. But when it comes to intellectual property, things get a little blurry because now you're dealing with ideas, you're dealing with creativity, you're dealing with thoughts. Over here, it's very important to have a system that safeguards these thoughts, ideas and creativity. And that is what we call intellectual property law. Now you have four types of them. You have one of them is trademarks. One of them is trade secrets. One of them is patents. And finally, we have copyright. And that's the thing that we will be talking about in this video and not the rest, because otherwise the video will be too long for you to understand. A copyright is basically an intellectual property law that protects original works of creative expression. Once a work is copyrighted, anyone who wants to use that work needs permission from the person who is holding the copyright license. Now you can copyright a variety of things, but YouTube mainly deals with audio and visual media. So whenever you're taking the work of anybody without permission, be it in the form of a music clip, a video clip, or even a picture, you're technically plagiarizing it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a melody, a song, or just the visuals from a video. It can also be the way these things are written. To use any copyrighted property, you need to get a license, a permission from the owner of the copyright, properly written in stone. Because in the past, there have been so many instances where a person has tried to get the copyrights from a third party who claims to own a copyright to a piece of song or music or art only to realize that that person was faking. We come across this all the time on YouTube. Like for instance, when you're searching for copyright free music on YouTube, more often than not, you will end up getting a copyright strike on your video saying that this song is copyrighted and you don't seem to have a license for it. Now, what if you want to use copyrighted content without licensing it or paying any kind of money for it? Well, you have two ways criticism and review. So for example, if you have a piece of copyrighted content, if you use it for personal or private use that may involve researching, it's fine. It's just restricted to you. But if you want to share it with other people, with the public, then you will have to make sure that you are either criticizing it or reviewing it. And the definitions of criticism and review are very blurry when it comes to this. Now, one more thing to note over here, and I'll just give you in the form of an example, okay? So let's see that, you, let's say you are running a commentary channel on YouTube and you are commentating on a trailer of a movie. That's fine. If you're streaming a game on YouTube, that's fine. But if either of these things have any kind of copyrighted music in them, 
then you are in trouble. Cyberpunk 2077 actually tried implementing an in-game setting that allows you to turn off copyrighted music, but given the bug filled and the rushed nature of the game, copyrighted music can still be played while using a certain feature in the game called Brain Dance. So it asked streamers in a public notice to turn off all music to avoid a copyright strike on YouTube. Now coming back to the exceptions, you can also use copyrighted works to report current events and current affairs. And whenever you use copyrighted works, it's important that you attribute them or give them credit and state your intent of work. Interestingly, parodies are not subjected to fair use, at least in India. In fact, my colleague Akhil wrote a brilliant piece on how Bollywood stands on the whole parody thing is actually killing content creation. Yeah, you should definitely give it a read. The thing is in the description, along with a lot of other further reading links. But the issue is when we look at the clauses, we forget about one very important thing in the law and that is limited views. You cannot blatantly take an entire video and expect not to get a strike. Now, another thing to remember while using copyrighted content is a thing called disparagement. This basically means that you cannot hold any false claims in your videos or show the copyrighted content in a negative light that will actually affect the reputation of the copyright holder. If this happens, you can accept some lawsuits coming your way. Now, another interesting thing to note over here is that after 70 years of death of a creator, all of their works are just automatically transferred to public domain. So you can easily use all of their works without ever thinking about a copyright strike in your video. Now, obviously there are certain exceptions to this. If their works are basically uh, copyrighted by a separate company, that may cause some issues. But let's say there's a classical artist like Mozart or Beethoven. Yeah, that's fine. Shakespeare, all of his works are fine. You can take them, you can adapt a story on it. It's perfectly fine. But the catch over here is that, let's say there's a person who is using the works of a classical musician. Let's say the example of Memories, that is a song by Maroon 5. They sample the track of Canon in D by Packlebell, but they copyrighted that song. So you still need to have copyrights to that song, even though it's actually a sample of some other music that is by some other classical musician. Same is the case with Wolfgang Gartner's. Yeah, Wolfgang Gartner's Symphony, uh, Fifth Symphony. That's actually based on Beethoven's Symphony Number no. Five. So again, the same copyright rules apply over here. He has the copyrights of that song. So yeah, you'll need to obtain uh, a proper license for that. Okay, so we have understood the basics of copyright, but if it was so strict, wouldn't we all be getting some sort of calls from a string of lawyers, right? If you have just infringed some kind of copyright while uploading some videos. Yeah, that has a lot to do with how YouTube was built. It's building blocks. In 2006, YouTube struck a deal with music companies to license music tracks to save itself from paying heavy lawsuits. It was just starting out and this was extremely critical. And so it developed a thing called Content ID, a system that actually scans every video on YouTube to check videos for copyrighted content. It scans a video and then it checks it with a huge database of copyrighted content. Now, the beauty over here is that since YouTube has actually licensed the copyrighted content with two massive contracts, the end user doesn't have to suffer. And this is what sets YouTube apart from its competitors like Vimeo and Daily Motion. Now, coming back to the two contracts that we were talking about, one of the two contracts is private and that is between YouTube and the big major media companies. And the second contract is basically between you and YouTube when you sign for YouTube for the first time, basically the terms and services, that agreement. Yeah, that's another contract. Now, the content ID system is impressive, but it's not perfect because it misses out on certain things. For instance, if there is a TV show, right? And if a creator, if a person on YouTube uploads that TV show without taking any kind of permission from the actual copyright holder of that TV show and just makes a few changes like, you know, changing a little bit of the audio track or the video track, resizing the video, changing the colors of it, it may still get, you know, passed by the content ID, but the copyright holders also run their own algorithms or actually may have their own regulators on YouTube who keep an eye out on any kind of copyright content 
and then they are eligible to send you a notice that okay this video has to be taken down because of a DMCA takedown or basically what we call a copyrighted strike and then things start going south for you. So in a nutshell, if you're uploading a music cover, that's a hit and miss because even if content ID allows you that, yeah, you can just go on with the song, you may still get a DMCA notice by the copyright holder of that music track. Now, this is an opportunity for serious abuse because several major publishers or viral news video publishers, they do a very unfair thing. For instance, if a person uploads a video of an event, let's say um, a person or a, a man biting a dog, okay, usually a dog bites a man. If he uploads that video and the viral publisher takes that video and then uploads it on their channel and then runs the content ID on that, they now hold the copyright to that video and the original publisher, the original guy who posted that video gets a notice from DMCA taking to take off that video from YouTube. Yeah, it's that unfair at times. So you should always be careful when this kind of thing happens and you should always take some sort of action by disputing that claim. But it's not that easy because disputing a claim takes first of all a lot of time and second a lot of money and third a lot of patience and fourth a lot of understanding of the law and it's just not easy for people like you and I who are not lawyers who don't have understanding of law to go and dispute this. Now there are several other infringements that people do all the time that we cannot possibly cover in this video because the length would just increase dramatically. For example, let's say a person takes some copyrighted footage from YouTube and puts it up on Facebook and Instagram. Or the vice versa, a person takes a screen recording of, a, of an Instagram live of an artist and then puts that on YouTube. What happens then and why does it happen? It is something that I want to discuss in a separate elemental video. So it's on you guys to tell me in the comments if you would like to know something about that. I'll make a separate one and then we can have all kinds of discussions on that topic in that video. But well, that being said, that brings us to the end of this very interesting topic, this very interesting episode of Elemental. What do you think about it? Let us know in the comments. And remember that new Elemental videos come out every Sunday at 1 p.m. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And also for all things tech, log on to gadgets360.com.